just went on a trip. You went on a very important trip. You went and saw and experienced the Promise Collection. I did, man. Yeah, I did. It was pretty exciting. Um, there was a lot of energy built up because um, it's this massive collection, right? It's brand new to the market. It's supposed to be like this, you know, kind of an example of the Edgar Church on a little bit of a smaller scale for this generation, for us. You know, I didn't get to experience the church collection. So this was a big deal. And I was going down there with a friend of mine, and I expected, I had my expectations. Sure. I had it all in my head of what it's going to be like to be there. I'm going down to Heritage to see this collection. Walk us through a little bit for those who haven't followed the Promise Collection story, our coverage on it briefly. Because this was a moment we had so many dealers, collectors, not just watch this from home on the screen. We got Butch in the house. What's up, Comic Butch? We also had dealers that got together to go experience it in person, in auction. This is nuts. Yeah, so just really quick. The Promise Collection was a new collection that was recently discovered due to the passing of uh, a gentleman. So it's now come to market. Now, the story goes that um, there were two brothers who both went to the Korean War. One came back. The other kept a promise to take care of that collection for him. So that is why it's called The Promise. This brother has kept this collection in absolute pristine condition for 70 years. Wow. Like, I can't get my kids to keep a promise for a, an hour or two. This guy kept a promise for 70 years to his brother, you know, to take care of it. And that's how much this guy loved his comics, and his brother understood that. Protect my funny books. That's the quote. So it's a very sentimental uh, collection if you really think about the history and the story behind it. And a pedigree is an assigned, um, let's say, status level for a collection. And this would be the 61st pedigree that CDC has ever given to a collection. And this is probably one of the better stories of those. And they all have a story. And we can get into that some other time. We've talked about getting into deeper, into pedigree stories. There's a lot of other ones, man. There's a lot of cool ones. CGC puts them in a special uh, labeled slab now. Looks great, but it signifies that this is a comic book, not just in a particular grade, but from a particular collection that makes it a bit more prestigious. Absolutely. So they were displaying these books, not even displaying these, the first batch of books, because there's 5,000 about total. All right. And allegedly 75% of them are going to come back as the highest graded of any copy, which is an absolute feat, you know, to, to match in comics. Cause I mean, there's been a lot of great collections that have come out. So 272 were for sale. And this is the, this was the unveiling. I mean, this has been building up the excitement in the community was pretty large. Heritage has been like teasing the pictures of what they've been getting in from CGC because CGC got them, graded them, sent them off to Heritage to get ready for this auction. Comic fam, hit the like, hit the subscribe button because this gentleman here, Overstreet Price Guide Advisor, Golden Age Specialist, you went down there and experienced this firsthand. Yeah, I took, a buddy of mine went down to Texas, okay? We flew down. All right. And um, I was like, all right, I'm here. What was it like flying with your buddy? Like, did you guys just talk about this nonstop? So he was smart enough to book a ticket way before I did. Okay. So he got this first class ticket for super cheap. All right. And then I like took forever to book mine. And I booked mine like a week or two prior. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm paying the same price for coach, dude. <laughs> so he was sitting up front there and I was sitting in, in wherever I, like I was sitting. But we arrived. And the second I get off this plane and he's super psyched. He gets these bombardment and emails that his company just got hacked. Okay. So he literally disappeared. Like I did not see him for like 36 hours. He missed the entire first day. Oh no. Yes. He missed the entire first day of the auction. Came back the second day. He got stuff handled. And he was just like, all right, I'm making up for that. <laughs> so now he's going in there. He's ready, man. Now money's burning a hole in his pocket. He's like, I missed one day. I flew all the way down here. I've been thinking about this weekend for a long time. And he missed the, the unveiling of all the books. He missed the tour of heritage that I had. He missed all that. So, okay. So walk me through that. I got to hear that. You guys, you toured, you toured heritage? Yeah. So we, we, I'm in Texas now. Okay. They're in Texas. All right. And they're in Dallas. And I'm staying in a hotel. I, I go down there. You like get in there a little early so you can get some rest. I mean, this guy's like, oh, the con's on Thursday. I'm going to go there on Monday. You know, I want to feel out on Tuesday, get ready mentally on Wednesday so I can hit the show floor at like, what, 4 a.m. if you can. 
you don't understand. Like I've built this thing up in my head to be this thing. Okay. So I'm like, have, I, I have this image in my head. So I'm like pumped. I'm excited. I go down to heritage. I take an Uber there. Okay. I don't need a rental car. Just take an Uber there. And I pull up to this building and I tell the Uber drivers, like, I'm not really sure what side the entrance is on. It's this big, huge commercial uh, parking lot with like this big structure. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what unit they are in this building. And I pull up. And we get to the entrance, and it's the entire freaking building. This thing is huge. This building's huge. And I have pictures of it, and you'll see them wherever the heck they are on the screen. Sure. Okay, and it says Heritage Auction. And I didn't expect that. I was like, whoa, this is no joke. All right, this is a major. So the building itself was giant. The, the building itself was enormous. I mean, it was an enormous building, Okay. So I get in there, and it's a beautiful lobby, and they have, like, these all-glass walls where you can you can go there and meet with your um, with people who are going to uh, appraise your collection or give you an idea. Very special rooms. I mean, it's, it's really nice. It's no joke. They need to have, like, a TV show, Antiques Roadshow type of thing going on there. It's it's next level. It's not just a comic book auction house. You know, they, they sell um, furniture and paintings and coins. I mean, they're a very, very big company, and you don't really get that until you get there and you're like this is when i get in there i'll explain some more it it feels like a museum okay historical space because you just have all these items around you that are ancient or you know just collectible or antiques it's just it's nuts so anyways i talked to the ladies up front they're like hi the person comes up to meet me, Rick Akers. Shout out to Rick Akers out there for Heritage Auctions. We talked about him too. You know, yeah, he's get... the man, man. If you guys have anything you want to consign with Heritage, give Rick Akers a call. Okay, he's the consignment director there. So it's a big deal. He was the one I was dealing with, and he knows his stuff pretty well, and I would definitely recommend chatting with Rick over there. Anyways, he walks me through. There's like two sets of, secure, two sets of security. Like you got to scan one door, and then you got to scan the other door, and then you get into this space. You walk in there, and it's a big show floor. And apparently, if you work there, it's like a whole new show floor like every two, three weeks. So you're literally seeing a brand new environment if you work there of just antiquities. Just like fresh setup. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's crazy. You'll see like ancient furniture and paintings all over the place and Fabergé eggs and Civil War guns and who the heck knows? Anything you can imagine. It's one of the biggest auction houses in the world. Yes. And then to have it constantly rotate would just be kind of fun to see. So it just completely transforms. And the walls are movable, so the spaces will shift. Anyways, so I thought that was fascinating. And then I get there, and there's this entire space of, like, coin graders, okay, who are just working at it and just doing coins. And you walk through the whole building, and they have an entire huge printing room. They put out so much print publications They've created their own printing center. So they have all printing equipment they need. They have professional printers in there. Yeah, because like a new setup every couple of weeks, every few weeks, you know, that sounds like a headache having to go through like a custom printing place. So they just do it themselves. All the promotional paperwork themselves. Wow. All Exactly. I was like, what? Do you have a whole print center? Then they have a whole another wing of like, and like I said, antique furnitures and all these doors and sections that are closed off that I don't need to be in. But, you know, they tell you what this room is. Wow. And you're just in this building, like I said, it's enormous. So they just have everything there. And so eventually I get to the uh, comic collection area. I get into this room. All right. And you got to imagine they're housing this entire collection here. They're housing every other comic that's coming in the future. Artwork, original artwork all over the place. Okay. Like first generation, literally. Uh, uh, a steel rack, okay, of first-generation Pokemon, magic cards. I mean, you just name it. It's all just right there. Wow. Okay. Now, is this just for, like, upcoming auctions, or do they have some stuff kind of like I know Diamond does? Like, they have, like, a museum area where they just have stuff that they've acquired themselves? It's just stuff on consignment. Okay. Okay, so they're they're there for sale. And so, I mean, you're literally looking at, like, a million-dollar rack of, of trading cards alone. And then... All these people who work there grading raw comics, they're sitting, they're all working. You know, they're checking the artwork, they're checking the animation cells, which is apparently a pretty big thing now. Sure. The original artwork, I mean, I, I took a picture with, I think, the most expensive piece of art that sold at that convention, that uh, Crime Suspense Stories number six cover. Again, 
There's a photo of it. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. Very controversial cover, but like as classic as it gets, I think it sold for like eight hundred thirty thousand bucks. The prices that we're about to get into, Comic Fam, are insane. For sure. And so then eventually I have to make my way to the auction room. Okay, so this is a multiple day auction. But day one was not the Promise Collection. Okay, it was just other books that were there. and Which was cool. It was fun to watch. I think it was day one. I don't know. One of those two. But it was cool to see books in life being auctioned. And I expect, remember what I told you. I had my expectations of what, what I was going to expect there. I get there. I am the only one in that room. No way. Only person at the live auction live. Why? Everyone else is phone bidding. No Everybody kidding. Everybody is phone bidding or on the internet bidding. I expected a room full of people like those auto shows. You know when you see those auto yeah, shows? Yeah, there's like a room. They're putting their, their like uh, little signs up. Yeah. You know, nodding their head to the guy, you know, doing the... No, 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 clearly. <laughs> it's a skill. <laughs> it is a skill. I mean, I had a paddle, okay? You had a paddle? I did. I, did. I had a paddle. Do you keep the paddle? I did. I, got the, I keep the paddle. Oh, I want to see like, the paddle. I spent enough. I kept the paddle. Okay, I should have brought it. I completely forgot. That's the only thing the guru got. Yeah. I, we got me. I got two paddles, okay? One for myself and then one for my buddy. And he had the X-Men one. I kept the Cap 1 paddle. I was like, I'm taking the Cap 1 paddle. Dude. Oh, they had like uh, stuff on <laughs> them? Yes. They had like an emblem on them. I'll show it to you, man. Well, they have a printing press there, so they're making it custom. I like exactly. that. Exactly. I was like, listen, I spent enough, man. I'm that makes you. Home. I mean, it's kind of like the CGC pen. You know, when you get a box of comics back from CGC, mm -hmm. they put a little sticker in there yep. and they put a CGC pen. Whenever I'm at a show, you know, you got your free CGC pens there. As I'm doing my stuff and I'm getting my comics graded, same with CBCS because they also have a pen. I always grab the pen. I feel like I'm getting something out of it. Yeah. Even if it's just a cheap pen. <laughs> I have it's so many something. CGC pens, dude. <laughs> dude yeah. That's all that's in my house. <laughs> the red, red pen, right? It's a yeah, red it's a pen. red pen. Oh, yeah. Comic fam, you have any CGC pens? Let us know in the comment section below. So let me tell you how it went because two days kind of meshed together. All right. So basically, my friend and I are there now. All right. He showed up the next day. All right. So I'm just going to go over the the convention as a whole, the environment, or not the convention, the auction as a whole. Was there anybody else there, like, for the live auction? No. Dude, you were the only me person and there. Me him were the only two people. Me, day one, was by myself. Okay, and wow. it was still exciting, interesting to see how it works. What? Okay, and because most of that first day was artwork. Sure. All right, and then comics too. It was just like really high end comics. There was an Action One. There was a Detective Twenty Seven. Okay, the Action One I think was Restore, but Detective Twenty Seven was like a five zero. So it was still a lot of cool books and then artwork to get into. But you could see watching the phone lines when the artwork was going was insane. Because there's probably eight people monitoring phones, okay? When the comics are going, it wasn't as busy. But when it came down to the artwork, it was just phones, 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 phones. So it was just interesting to see how people are buying books, you know? And I, and I asked questions about that. Like, what's what's going on? Why is, first off, is why is nobody here, okay? It's like, yeah, well, most people just either came at some point and looked at them or they just rather just do it from their home on the internet. Well, seeing so much call. like activity online, there were so many people saying they wanted to go. I assumed that there would be a, a lot of people. Like it really looked like there was going to be a lot of people there. Yeah. And they present it live. Like it's a thing in front of an audience and, sure. and theoretically they have room for it. I'm not saying it's a large room, but you could probably fit 50 people, maybe, a little, maybe 60, but you know, we had free lunch there. I just hung out. I got what to they experience feed you? it. What was lunch at Heritage? Oh, uh, I got to enjoy like I don't know. They asked me. They asked me a week in advance or two. What it's like a like? wedding. Do you want steak or fish? Yeah. What would you like for your meal? Here's the sandwiches that we have that we can order in for. And so that's where we had sandwiches. And I was like, okay, great. And I uh, went to a dealer uh, retailer summit one time. And they had a bunch of food out for all the retailers. You know, that's where you get like the, the cool comic books and the swag and industry insight. And I went to the back of the room because I was like one of the last people in there because I couldn't find it. It was like, like San Diego Comic-Con. And they had a bunch of different sandwiches. They had turkey, they had ham, and they had like a veggie one. And I'm like, ooh, I'm feeling some turkey today. And I'm going over there. I get my turkey. I look to my left. And you know who else wanted turkey that day? Scott Snyder. He was sit standing right there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to eat turkey sandwich near Scott Snyder. Great memory. Dude, you guys were turkey twins that time. Turkey man. twins, that's, brother. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> okay, so you're so you're there. You got your lunch. You're getting ready. They're trying to feed you so that you know you're you're excited and as well as ready for that momentum to just shoot you in the direction of throwing money down. I didn't bid on anything that day. What do you think they thought 
like you're the only person there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they. Pro- I don't. Know. I mean, it was good to see people, and just again, I'm there to experience heritage and what it's like. And they're just like, what's this guy doing here? There's just but, one dude here. Yeah, right. a, Go get him a sandwich. We got in the, in the refrigerator yeah. back there. We're usually sleeping off camera on these chairs. I mean, what do you? <laughs> they're probably like, oh man, we typically like to come in in our pajamas on this day because we're not on camera. But someone's here, so everybody get your nice clothes on or something. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> you ruined it for all the employees, <laughs> Jeff. I'm sorry, guys. My bad. I did not know. Rick Eggers, it's your fault. Just kidding, <laughs> dude. Uh, so, anyways, it was a great time um, to see day one. Okay, because I got to see great artwork go. I got to see some awesome books sell. There's still a lot of energy in the room. It's still excitement because it's like, okay, well, I'm the only one here. I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to take it in. The next day is the Promise Collection. So whatever, day one's over, and next is day two. So I get to Heritage again for day two. Again, day two. This is the Promise Collection day. This is it. The big day. It is going to be brought to market for the very first time. Here we go. And the only people there again is just me and my buddy who finally made it. I can't believe you guys are the only, only ones there. two people. Wow. Right? You would think. Am I wrong to assume? I'm not wrong to assume. I don't think so, people, man. Right? You no, would think. People alluded that they were going to go. Yeah. I, I would think you would want to go. All right? Considering that it's so special to see something like this come to market. Historical moment, man. You'll be always able to say that you were there in person. You got to touch the comics, man. Not only that, actually, I forgot to say the after, after the first day, I can't, again, it all comes together. They literally took me into a room. No, this was after day one. They took me into a room, private room. They brought over the entire collection on a metal rack. I got to flip through the entire 272 books. Whoa. I went live with it. I went live on my IG with it. I didn't realize you got to see all of them. All of them. Flip through them. I let everybody see the books. Okay. Follow Golden Age Guru on IG. I'm sure he saved it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I saved it. I don't know why I wouldn't have. Yeah, people He will if he hasn't yet, but Golden Age Guru on IG. Hey, and congratulations. You hit 10K. Yes. After our last podcast, the comic fam came in. And they brought the heat and followed you on Instagram. We do live claim sales over there, so you should do that as well. Yeah, big shout out. Thank you, guys. And um, But it was, I mean, <laughs> it was on a cart, man. <laughs> like, just to see all of it in its glory was great and present that to everybody. And then the next day was the auction. So, again, back to the next day. We're sitting there. Now is it. All right. And the very first book up was, I think it was an action comic maybe. And then the second book was an all-American comic, 61. Okay, nine six. All right, and I gotta tell you, um, I love that book for Solomon Grundy, and we'll talk about more about that later. Um, so with that, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna put a bid in on it. All right, and I was kind of excited and kind of really concerned that my bid was gonna win, but then thank God it didn't because they got someone outbid me. That's like one of those moments on eBay <laughs> where you're like. All right, if it goes for this much, I'll be happy. I'll, it'll be okay. But as you get closer to the ending of it, you start getting worried like, oh, wait, maybe I'm going to win this. Did I actually want to pay this much money? Am I the one who's leading the bid? You start second guessing yourself. Yeah, because after it was all done. And here's the thing in person, too, you forget. When you're on, at home and computer, you can see how much the buyer's premium is going to be. Okay, because right. there's a buyer's premium that's like 19 and a half or 20%. So if you think you're paying $1,000, you're really paying, you know, 19.5% more than that. That buyer's premium will bite you in the butt, just like this cat will if you're not giving him enough attention. Butch is on something today, comic fam. You're getting the cat, you know, the comic gato. Yeah, so um, you don't see that in person, and that gets you at the end. You're like, oh, that's that's a pretty good deal. And then you're like, all right, winner, we're at this price. You're like, oh, that's right. And a couple times, you know, with my wins, I, I hit me. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit more now. <laughs> so remember in person, okay, it, it's a little misleading at first. So you got you to gotta teach your brain that because you're, you're getting an going, excitement. Where's the, what's the calculation again? <laughs> yes. And you're bidding as people online. So they're just, they're announcing your paddle number as they're going. Okay. Butch, I'm going to move you, dude. <laughs> So it's a little misleading, like I said, with, with watching it because you don't really know what the final hammer price is. And it's happening so fast that, you know, you just you get caught up with, like, 
just trying to get that bid up that's showing up on the screen in front sure. of you because there's a screen and a monitor that you're looking at. So I almost won this and I would have paid a lot of money and it would have been like, okay, I'm done. On the very second book of this entire auction, I'm done. <laughs> would you have just gone home? <laughs> I would have witnessed it and stayed, but I would have been like, okay, I'm long gone. But another, oh, one more thing too that makes it so enticing and they really suck you in is you have a 12-month payment plan on this. Oh, so now you have this added layer of, all right, I don't have to have all the money right now. I can pay it off over time. But then that kind of adds to that FOMO because you start thinking, man, you know, I can spread it out and it won't be as big of a hit. But you're still spending the same amount of money, though. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more if you're financing that. Oh, true. Too. Yeah. So, probably add some interest to that. Right. So um, but it does make it more palatable to jump into some of these books. Because really, you don't get that length of time with the other books. It's only with these promise books. Oh, okay. So it's more like three months or so for the other, apparently, for the other books. All right. I didn't win that book, thank God. But didn't want, We're going to talk about what that book went for, so stay yeah, tuned, yeah. Comic Fan. We'll talk about that later. And the auction continues, okay? And you're just looking at some of these books, and I had a plan. It's like, these are the books I'm going to go for. And these, most of the ones I'm not going to. And um, some of that plan got thrown out the window. Okay. Happens. Some, some of that plan I stuck. I stuck to it. All right. Okay. I think there was two buys I did not expect to go for. Okay. Just save those buys because I, I want to, um, we're going to talk about those in a little bit. Okay. So you're flipping through these books. You actually got to touch the graded comic books very carefully. And what did you feel? Like, I know you were on camera and you're entertaining at the same time, but like, I'm hoping that you took some time to realize what moment you had. You were one of the last people to experience the collection as a whole in its entirety intact since it was brought to market like how what was that like well that wasn't the entire collection well, that the, was the, just the, the 272 part. graded first part of the collection the hit first market part, yeah. you know so yes whoever's getting a promise book um i did touch it so <laughs> just i don't know if that means anything to you they had a plastic on it you know yeah they had plastic on it um, you know, I did take a second before and after, right? When I'm filming, you can't do anything, man. You're just trying to get through, answer questions, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, when you watch it on a cart, okay, let me just say this. When you see it all in a cart in boxes, you're just like, it just looks like more comics. Like another collection. Yeah. Then you get to flip through it and it's like, you know, you're like, oh, wow, this, these are in the boxes and it's cool. If I had them all laid out, it would have been probably a whole nother Things you get to see the covers instead of just once. the tops as you're going through it. But what were the comics like? They were beautiful. <laughs> Seeing them in person, what were the colors like? I mean, the color strikes were very nice on all the books. It was great colors, great page quality. Most of the books were white or off white, white. So the paper quality is awesome. Um, I felt like, you know, we're not going to get too much into the grading of what someone had a 9 8 or 9 6 and kind sure. of where we felt with them because there, there is a lot of like underground conversations but again you could say the same thing about church books some people felt the church books were overgraded too so uh let's not get too far down that rabbit hole but overall it's a beautiful collection beautiful story love the new label because they used to have like the black and white tuxedo label now they got black with the gold tint sheen feel to it which just looks super secret agent 007 you know spy worthy label and you you were chilling with your homie <laughs> What did he feel like? Because this wasn't just your experience, too. Like, he was there over this week, and did he have as good of a time as you, minus the craziness that was happening at home? Yeah, I mean, he went on a tear. He probably bought six to eight books. Oh, wow. Promise books. Holy smokes. Yeah, I bought two promise, two non-books, non-promise books. I was happy with my mind for the most part. Um, two of them I bought on a whim, thinking that, you know, one of them I'm really happy with, the other one I'm going to just resell. <laughs> <laughs> Comic fam, what do you think about this? We have uh, someone who visited the Promise Collection. You were there, man. Like, you were there. That's good. Like, long term, dude, you'll never forget that experience. Um, most people only experienced it through the screen. You got to see these books in hand, man. You got to hold them. You got to see that LB Cole, that black light, multiple black light covers shining like they did when they came off the press. And on top of that, I mean, seeing these record prices on these books was huge. Okay. Right. Obviously super exciting. Lots of buzz. You don't know where these books are going to end. The whole room has no idea. I mean, you see them all just whispering to each other like, Oh my God, they can't believe the numbers. They, they who are experts dealing with high grade books, like the best of the best are shocked and excited to see 
the energy behind this collection, obviously they're getting money out of it too, but as a person who appreciates it, you're still like happy for the hobby to see this type of money going into it, okay? And out of all those books though, okay, still one of the biggest talked about stories afterwards was my favorite book, Marvel Spotlight 5. No. <laughs> <laughs> that 9-8, man. That's where that auction, that 9-8 yeah. sold for, was it like $230,000 or something? Like, that was like, everybody was like, whoa. Craziness. I know. I saw that. And the first thing I said to all my friends was like, yo, Guru's going to come back and he's going to be talking about that damn Marvel Spotlight 5 again. Comic fam, we got to hear your thoughts about this. Um, it's historical. It is the... The, it's unique. There's so many other pedigrees that are out there that I'm excited to dive down that, you know, wealth of information to go through it with you to find some, maybe we can even get some back here because you're going to be getting some books. So we're going to show them on camera, but we're going to also let them know what you got here in a bit. But I got to know what the community thinks about this in the comment section.